And so I was embarrassed and I didn't want to tell people because I felt like people weren't taking it seriously. Autoimmune disease and fibromyalgia and other chronic illnesses are linked to trauma. Exercise and eat well and your pain will get so much better. That definitely didn't work. Who really knows what happened, why my body went haywire. It is a real condition that affects so many people and it's so hard to live with. Hello my friends, Amy Esther here and in today's video, I wanna share with you my fibromyalgia story. I can't believe I haven't done a video on my fibro story yet. I don't know, I just missed it. I did a video on all the other stories of all my chronic illnesses because if you're new here, you should know I have multiple chronic illnesses, not just fibromyalgia, but I have many things going on. And I've done a video about all of them and sharing my story except fibromyalgia. So here we are today sitting down. We're going to chat about my fibromyalgia story. I would love to hear your story. So let me know in the comments below so we can connect and learn more about each other. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, especially if you live with fibromyalgia and other chronic illnesses, you're definitely gonna wanna be subscribed to my channel so you can learn how to live the most amazing life while living chronically ill, because that's what we do here, you guys. I have fibromyalgia and many other chronic illnesses, and I live an awesome life, and I share it with you here on YouTube. So fibromyalgia is widespread, pain and fatigue, really. I mean, there's there's more to it. If you have fibromyalgia, you know that. There's usually sleep problems and anxiety, depression, other things that go along with it, digestive issues, lots of things. But mainly the way that I've heard it described is widespread pain and fatigue. If you wanna know more about fibromyalgia, I do have a video about it. I will link it down below, but let's just talk about my story. So something that I found recently is I read a book called The Body Keeps the Score, and it's about how autoimmune disease and fibromyalgia and other chronic illnesses are linked to trauma. Now, that does not mean to say that everybody who has fibromyalgia has had trauma in their past, but that there's a correlation there. Not causation, but correlation, right? And I think that's so true. <laughs> and based on my life, I feel like that is a huge part of my story. After I read that book, it was like, this makes total sense. I have random fatigue, random pain, and I don't know where it comes from. And could it be from some of the mental stress that I went through when I was younger coming out in a different way? So that is really interesting. If you've had any kind of trauma in your past, you should read this book. You should look into it. I'm not saying that your pain is in your head. It's real physical pain that you're feeling, but it could be coming out as a way to release emotions or other things, traumas and things that you are holding in. So just something to look into. Definitely part of my story. <laughs> so let's go back to when I was a teenager. So, no, I didn't get fibromyalgia or have any problems physically until a little bit later in life, but I had some emotional trauma when I was a teenager and I held it in. I didn't talk about it. I didn't let it out. I didn't do anything about it, I held it in and I thought instead of feeling my feelings, I'm going to pretend they're not there and I'm going to work and I'm going to focus on school and I'm going to get four jobs and I'm going to do 20 credits every semester in college. That's what I decided to do. So that was through um, junior high, high school and college. I kind of just held in a lot of emotions and instead of feeling just I, I did other things. I buffered and didn't didn't feel my feelings. <laughs> so flash forward, I got married to my husband when I was 22, 23, 22. I think I was 22. I think I was 22. Got married and on our honeymoon, I got food poisoning. So it was about a week after we got married. I got food poisoning. My husband got it too. We had eaten the same dinner, felt really sick for 24 hours, and then he felt better. And I was like, okay, I guess mine's just taking a little longer. And then 48 hours go by and then 72 and then it's been two weeks and I'm still sick. I went to lots of doctors trying to figure out what 
was wrong. I was having a lot of stomach issues, bloating, pain in my stomach, all of that stuff. And then over the next year, it started to, what the way I describe it, it started to spread, right? Which I don't know exactly what happened, but it went from being gut issues to now I'm super fatigued. I can't get out of bed. Now I have these muscle aches. Now I have these worsening migraines. I had migraines already, but they're getting worse and just symptoms all over my body, just feeling pain everywhere. And that was about a year. So it started as stomach issues about a year later. It just, maybe not even a year, like eight months later, it like transferred to the rest of my body. And then I was feeling sick everywhere. I was teaching school at the time. I was a high school math teacher and it was my first year teaching and I was miserable the whole time, even though it was like my dream job at the time. I just thought it was the perfect job for me and I was absolutely miserable. And I went to doctor after doctor, got test after test, and they were all normal. They did all this blood work. They did CT scans and MRIs and all the things. And I ended up being diagnosed with a few things. I was diagnosed with SIBO, PCOS, endometriosis. None of it explained the fatigue and muscle aches and other pain symptoms I was having. And so I kept going to doctors. I kept trying to figure it out. And finally, I got to the point where I was like, I cannot work anymore. I quit my job. And right around that same time I ended up quitting my job, I got diagnosed with fibromyalgia. My doctor said, you have pain on both sides of your body, on the right and left, on the top and bottom. That's meeting the criteria for fibromyalgia. And then we will do this pressure point test, which I did have some of the pressure points, not all of them, but enough that they said, okay, we're gonna diagnose you with fibromyalgia. And I really felt, this is, I don't know. I don't wanna say this because I know other people have fibromyalgia, I'm not trying to put your pain, minimize your pain. But for me in that moment, if we're just being completely honest, I felt embarrassed by that diagnosis because of what I'd heard about it up until that point, if that makes sense. I had just heard that it was just something that you get when you're really old and there's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just this random pain. And I was honestly like embarrassed to tell people, not because I think anybody should be embarrassed about fibromyalgia, but because I was so sick that I had to quit my job and I couldn't get out of bed and I would tell people And they would act like, oh, it's just fibromyalgia. That's so great. I'm so happy that you figured it out. And now you can just take a medication and you're fine. And I'm thinking like, no, that's not how it's working. (laughs) Like I can't get out of bed. I am in so much pain that I feel like I can't do anything. Every time I stand up, I feel like I'm going to pass out. Every muscle in my body hurts. And the people I talk to with fibromyalgia, it seems like they can function normally and I can't because that's just what I had seen of fibromyalgia to that point. Now I know now that there's many people who live with fibromyalgia and cannot function normally and suffer and there's lots of different levels of it. But I think in my mind, I'm thinking it's just a not a big deal thing because that's what everybody acted like when I would tell them. And so I was embarrassed and I didn't want to tell people because I felt like people weren't taking it seriously. And it was just like a complainy disease. So people who complain about pain, they're the ones who get diagnosed with this, but there's not an actual problem going on. And again, I don't want to share that in like diminishing anyone else's pain. I'm just telling you the truth of my story and how I felt at that time. And I no longer feel that way about fibromyalgia, just so you know. But at that time, that's how I felt. And I just wanted to be honest and share that with you. But if you have fibromyalgia, your pain is real. It's not all in your head. People minimize it or diminish diminish it. That is on them. That is not on you. It is a real condition that affects so many people and it's so hard to live with. It is not just complaining. It is not any of that. I just had to say that, but that's what I thought at the time. And I felt kind of weird about it. And I think on top of that, of just the people saying stuff, also, even before anyone said anything, I just didn't feel right about it. And it turns out 
there were other things going on. I have POTS, which causes me to get dizzy when I stand, my blood not to circulate well. So I was getting really sick when I would stand up. And so on top of all the fibromyalgia pain, I also had the POTS and some other things going on that weren't found at that time. And so even though there were other things going on, just the fibromyalgia itself is still just, it's not fun. So at that time though, I still didn't know what else was going on. So I was just like, okay, I guess I have fibromyalgia. I learned about it. People were like, exercise and eat well and your pain will get so much better. And that didn't happen. Like I would say sometimes exercise helped me, sometimes it made it worse. Sometimes I'd eat really good and feel better and sometimes I'd eat super healthy and feel absolutely terrible. So that definitely didn't work. I did try a few medications. I know I tried gabapentin, Lyrica, is that? I think I might've tried that too. But those gave me such bad side effects that it was not worth it. I was sleeping all the time. I just, it wasn't worth it to me for, like I feel like the benefits of it it did help me a little bit in the pain wise, but the benefits weren't enough that it was worth the side effects, if that makes sense. They were just awful side effects. And then I also ended up getting pregnant while I was on one of those medications and I miscarried. And I think because of that, it just terrified me that was that why I miscarried? And of course I've had more miscarriage since then when I wasn't on medication, but I think because of that, I had like this bad feeling with it. And I was like, I'm not going to do the medications anymore. I'm going to try other stuff. And so I did try them, kind of worked, not really. So a little while later, I did end up getting diagnosed with POTS. And that was when I was pregnant. I had figured out there's nothing wrong with me, as everybody says. And it's just fibromyalgia and you'll be fine. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have kids. And the flexible schedule of having kids actually works really well for me. I feel like it's a good job for people who live chronically ill, honestly, um, because it's so flexible. Not that kids are easy. There's a lot of hard things that come from it. But for me, it gave me some purpose, which is something that I was lacking. I knew I couldn't work I could not do a job for someone else. And I tried to start my own business at that time. It did not go super well, but um, I found that I just needed a, some purpose. And so I ended up having kids. That's a whole nother story because I dealt with some PCOS and endometriosis that made that a little difficult and some miscarriages and all of that stuff. But then when I found that I had POTS and started treating my pot symptoms, I saw a lot of help with my with my POT symptoms and definitely still have a lot of the fibromyalgia pain that doesn't link to POTS, if that makes sense. Because for a while I thought, maybe I don't even have fibro, but then as I've like looked more into it, I think I do. And then just like a year ago, I started going to trauma therapy. I started doing EMDR and I started talking to my therapist about it and she's like, I wonder if you got married and you had all this trauma that you were holding in and not feeling your feelings and your emotions, and then you got married and felt safe. I wasn't physically unsafe, but emotionally safe, if that makes sense. Like I finally felt like, okay, now I'm kind of starting my life over. I'm starting a new life with my husband together, and we are going to have our own experiences together. I can leave all that behind. I can relax. And doing so let out all of the emotions I was feeling, but putting them into physical symptoms, if that that didn't make sense. But that book, The Body Keeps the Score, explains it a little better. I think the title of it is, a, it's just a good title. Like the body keeps the score. If you're holding in these emotions, they're going to come out some way. Now I did have night terrors. I have another video on that, but I've had pretty bad night terrors, um, especially after I got married and after I had kids, I got really bad night terrors. Those have gotten better through the EMDR. So I do think that was part of it, but I also think my physical pain was part of that trauma and emotions that I wasn't releasing before that then my body's like, we got to release this somehow. So it came out in night terrors. It came out in physical pain of fibromyalgia and the fatigue. And my body was exhausted because it was fighting for so long. And then it finally just gave up, which is why 
I'm, this is a theory, obviously. Nobody can prove this, but which is my theory as to why I got food poisoning that never went away because my body was like, we're done fighting. We're relaxing. We're not doing this anymore. We are releasing this and in turn released pain and fatigue. Because what's super interesting is that if I'm having a lot of anxiety, if I'm feeling stressed, my fibromyalgia gets worse my pain gets worse. My fatigue gets worse. I feel more nauseous. It's, I feel physical symptoms when I'm having a more emotional experience. And although I don't think, at least right now, from my experience, I don't think that the therapy I've gone through that has taken away my night terrors. I used to wake up screaming every night and now I don't. I used to be so anxious to go to bed that I just lay there awake for hours. Like, and when I say hours, I mean like four or five hours, just lay there awake, can't sleep. It has helped that. And in some ways, my physical pain is a little bit better right now. My fatigue's a little bit better. I kind of don't think it's going away. I don't think that like therapy was the answer for me to get rid of my fibromyalgia, but I do think that that is what triggered my body to release all of this pain is holding in those emotions and then my body is now letting them out in different ways. That's what I think my story is. <laughs> um, it's definitely up for debate. I mean, who really knows what happened, why my body went haywire, why I feel all this pain and fatigue, but I'm just learning little bits every single year that's like kind of putting little puzzle pieces together. Maybe I won't have the full puzzle till the next life, but for now, that's my puzzle that I have kind of put together. The timing just seems too coincidental to me, especially after the way that my therapist described it after reading The Body Keeps the Score. It's so interesting. I will link that book down below, by the way, if you're interested in reading it. But I'm interested to know if anyone else had any emotional trauma that you think could be linked to it. Or what's your story? If that's not your story, let me know your story down below. Okay, you guys. I am feeling sick <laughs> and fatigued and tired from this filming this video. So I'm going to go lay down. I hope you'll lay down too if you're feeling sick. If you're feeling like you're having a good day, I hope you get up and do something awesome with your day. Either way, I hope it's awesome. Whether you have an awesome day laying on the couch or you have an awesome day cleaning your house or going to work or whatever it is you want to do. I hope you have an amazing day. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next video. 